So you're ready to settle down, but where should you call home? Wherever you choose, you're going to want to pick somewhere flat. Terraforming is very time and energy consuming, so the less you need to do it, the better. Be sure you build near lots of trees. You'll need plenty of wood for constructing your buildings and your palisade. Trees grow faster in their native terrain. Keep that in mind if you're planning to grow trees later on. Swamps are a very powerful biome. They provide easy curiosities, candle bears for wax, leeches to treat your wounds, and lots more. You'll want to be somewhat close to a swamp for this reason. The bigger the swamp, the better. If you're close to grassland, it will give you easy access to tameable animals. You can even feed a clover to a horse and ride it into a swamp or use it for hunting. If you choose to build close to the water, it will make hauling water, boats, and items faster, but it will also make you an easier target for raiders to find. Water and clay play an important role in improving your food and crafting quality. You may want to settle near a high quality water or clay node. Alternatively, you can build your base inside a cave. Caves can have multiple entrances, so ideally you'll want to pick one with just one entrance. Another problem you might encounter building in a cave is the bats. Early in the game, you may struggle with fighting them. They can also spawn in very inconvenient places, while later in the game they can become a great source for animal hides. Caves can give you easy access to walls to test for ores. Now in order to actually claim land, you'll need the skill Yamanry. It takes 4000 LP, its prerequisite skills are farming and the will to power. The initial personal claim is a 5x5 and can be expanded at the cost of 10 LP per square. After you build it, it'll take one in-game day or 8 pre-life hours for it to become active. Claims can't be built or expanded within 5 tiles of another claim, they also can't cover a localized resource. In order to build a personal claim, you'll need a beautiful dream from a dream catcher, four bone materials, five blocks wood, and four stone. All right, you have your base location. Hopefully it's somewhat flat. In order to terraform the ground, one of our characters will need the skill landscaping. This will allow your character to place five survey flags a day, find a depth that works well, where you won't have to move too much dirt, grab yourself a shovel, and start leveling. You should place down a stockpile or two so that dirt won't fill up your inventory. You can use the worms you get for fishing if you set them aside, otherwise they'll be used as dirt. If you have lots of trees in your base, use a shovel to remove the stumps. It's much quicker to destroy that way. If you need to move many stockpiles of dirt, consider building yourself a wheelbarrow. It will make moving the dirt stacks of 250 very easy and quick. It costs 15 wood, 10 boards, 8 leather, and 4 bone glue. If you have the materials ready to build your palisade, you should put a higher priority on leveling these areas. After you've leveled your area, you should pave the ground with stone. You should pave anywhere you're planning to place buildings, walls, and immobile structures. Immobile structures will decay if placed on a non-paved tile. Your hearthling can run on paved tiles with significantly less stamina drain. If you encounter a terrain you can't pave, just stomp it to dirt or hit it with a plow. Now, if you're the creative type, you can use the different colors of the stones to make some art. Just don't pave all of your land. You're going to want to leave a lot for farming, animals, and tree growing. Now, we need to build a palisade for protection. It's going to take a lot of wood to complete. The initial corner post costs 100 wood blocks, 10 leather, 2 bone glue, and 5 rope. Then 30 blocks for subsequent corner posts, 3 blocks for each wall section, and 30 or 45 blocks for 2 to 3 wide gates. When you build your wall, create more than one exit to prevent raiders from trapping you inside. Another precaution you should take is building some airlocks. These airlocks will prevent anyone from rushing inside while your gate is down. When building your gates, face them so they open outwards. There are two types of gates, the normal ones and the visitor gate. Visitor gates apply visitor buff to all players but the owner. This prevents a player from committing any criminal acts, including combat. Palisades on unclaimed land can easily be vandalized if incomplete, unsealed, or drying. So ideally, you'll want to finish it in one go, or make sure it's on claimed land. Palisades soak slowly from zero to full over the course of three days. When completed, you're going to want to put locks onto all of your gates. The master key will be able to open the gates from either side, and so it should never leave the base, and should be stored on an alt character that's logged off. Slave keys, on the other hand, can only open the gates from the inside. 
Should a character die with a slave key, no one with that key will be able to open your gates from the outside. Your characters can simply return to their hearth fire to re-enter the base. Now, all of this is going to take a lot of food, water, and energy, so you're going to want to stock up beforehand. Maybe considering gathering lots of grasshoppers for energy and having a few barrels of water. We'll talk more on the food system in another video. Good luck!